Now that we have learned about basic if statements, we can work on the more complex ones, because if statements can be extended. Number one is you can combine different conditions inside of one if statement on the same line. And number two is you can nest one if statement inside of another if statement, which lets you create really complex systems that check different values. Let's start with combining conditions. And in here, the two keywords we need are AND and OR. Kind of confusing to say, but you get the idea. How this would look like is we have if 5 is smaller than 1, AND E in hello, or 10 is different from 4. This may look confusing, but let's go through it one by one. To understand how this works, we have to understand AND and OR. AND means that all the parts have to be true. Meaning, when we are talking about this AND here, this bit in particular, both of these conditions, 5 is more than 1 and E in hello, have to be true individually for this entire statement here to return true as a whole. Whereas OR works in the opposite way, where only one OR statement has to be true. Which means, if this OR statement here is true, then it wouldn't matter if all of this is false, because as long as one OR statement is true, then the entire IF statement is going to return true as a whole. And this is probably going to sound very confusing, so let's do this a bit more practically. Let's do this actually in the simplest possible way. Let's say I have IF TRUE and I want to print TRUE. This IF statement here really doesn't make too much sense, but to illustrate the point, it's really useful. But since we're adding the boolean value true in this if statement, this is always going to run. Meaning if I execute the code, we are getting true. And now what we can do is use and in here. And if I add false now and run this again, nothing is going to happen. This line will not be executed. Because of and, both the first one, this one here, and the second one have to be true for this entire condition to be true as a whole, which there aren't right now. But if it was true, then this would run again. The way you have to think about AND is I am only going to run this if statement if this is true and this is true and anything else is true and if any single statement is false, then the entire thing is not going to be run. I hope that makes sense. It does take some time to get used to it. Let me go back to false. And the other word we can use is OR. Now we want to run this line of code if this is true or this is true. Meaning if either of these is true, then the entire if statement is going to run. If I run this now, this is going to be true because for OR, only one of them has to be true. And once you get so far, you can combine AND and OR. For example, what I can do is true and true and true or true. Now, this would obviously return true as a whole because we only have true values in here. But now, if I set this to false, this would still run. And the reason is, let me add a bit of white space around it so I have more space to draw on. I am assuming that this is kind of confusing right now still. Python essentially combines all of the end statements into one block inside of the if statement. And this entire block can either be true or false. For end, every single value has to be true. And if a single value is false, then the entire thing is going to be false. In our case, since there is one false statement, the entire block here is going to be false. Once we have that, Python is looking at the OR statement, this bit here. And as a consequence of this, we now have false from all of the AND statements, and then we are checking false or true. And if either of these are true, then the entire IF statement is going to be true, which in this case it is. Just to make sure, let's do one exercise for this one already. And what I want you guys to do is here we have three variables. And the exercise is going to be fairly similar compared to what we have done in the last video. What you should be working on is another if statement that checks if the money available is greater than 80 
and if you are hungry. If those two conditions are true, print, eat something fancy, or whatever you want. However, this should also run if board is true. And for that to work, you have to combine and and or statements. So pause the video now and try to figure this one out. To get started, I need an if statement once again. And now I want to check if money available is greater than 80. This covers this first bit. On top of that, I also want to check the end if hungry is equal to true. With that, I have covered this entire bit. Now that I have that, I can print eat something fancy. If I run this now, this is going to return eat something fancy. Let me comment out this stuff at the top so we're not getting confused. Eat something fancy. If I change hungry to false, run this again, we are not getting anything. The simple reason being that both of these statements have to be true because of the end statement here. If either of these is false, then the entire thing is going to return false, which it does right now, so none of this is going to be run. However, now what we can do is use an OR statement as well to cover the last bit, OR if board. And now I want to check OR board equals to true as well. If I run all of this now, we get eat something fancy. And what happened here is Python first checks the two statements connected by AND. And it sees that money available is 100, which indeed is greater than 80, meaning this part here is going to be true. But then for hungry equals true, it looks at the hungry variable and this one is false, meaning this one is going to return false. As a consequence, the entire bit here is going to give us a big false. The difference now is we are also checking this or statement, which means we are going to check if anything in here is true or if this condition is true, which it actually is right now. And as a consequence, the entire thing combined is going to return true. The consequence being, we are going to run this line of code. And I hope this makes sense. Using these and or keywords can be a bit confusing. Definitely play around with this in your own time if you're struggling. That being said, most of the time, you are going to keep this fairly simple. You usually only have a single and statement in here and then you're good to go. Don't overthink this. The other way to make if statements more complex is by nesting them. And let me do an example. We could have an if statement if A is inside of the list A and B. Right now, this one would be true. But inside of this, we can add another if statement that is indented by one line. And inside of that, we could even add another if statement. And this system, we could continue forever, as long as we keep on adding more indentation levels. Let's have a look at this one in a bit more detail. I'm going to comment out the stuff we have done earlier. I guess I could organize it a tiny bit better. There we go. And now I want to look at nested if statements. And to keep comments a bit more consistent, let me add one for the first part. Let's call it combining conditions. The example we have just seen is we want to check if the letter A is in the list A and B. If that is the case, I, let's say, want to print A is in the list. Executing the code is going to print this line. This one should be fairly straightforward. And again, remember, we are on one level of indentation. On this line of indentation, though, we could add another if statement. We could, for example, check if A and then use the method is alpha. Then I need a colon again, 
And now I need another indentation line or another level of indentation. And then here, let me print, it is a letter. If I run this now, I get A is in the list and it is a letter. Now, this example really doesn't make too much sense, but we can make it quite a bit more interesting. For example, what you could be doing is create a variable. And in this right now, I want to have, let's say the string A. And now I want to check if X is inside of this list and I want to check X is alpha. If I run this again, we are going to get the same result. We essentially just replaced the string A with a variable that contains the same string. But once we have that, I could add another string in here that contains a one, which is not in the alphabet. So if I check this one here, what I expect now to happen is that this is still going to be inside of the list. So this entire condition should be true. As a consequence, this print statement should run. However, the number one, even if it's inside of a string, is not in the alphabet. So this condition should not be true. And if I run this, we can indeed only see this line here was run, but this was false. And as a consequence, this line here was not executed. If you wanted to, you could even add another level of indentation. I don't know, let me just add true. So we always execute it. And inside of that, you could keep on adding more if statements. There's absolutely no limitation on how many if statements you can add. The only thing you really have to consider here is that each if statement has to be on a separate level of indentation. At the very least, if you want them to be part of the other if statement. If you added an if statement here, let me get rid of this one, you would check those two individually. The way you want to think about it is that each if statement is one block of code. This if statement here is one block. Inside of this if statement, we have one block for this if statement and another block for this if statement. And these two here are independent of each other, but they both depend on this if statement to run. If this if statement does not run, neither of those will run. Just to have something in here, let me print something. And let me add some proper white space so this looks a bit cleaner. All right, with that, we can do another exercise and then finish this part. What I want you guys to do, let me copy it from up here. I want you guys to check these three conditions, but now instead of using this system here, I want you guys to create a nested if statement. And if all three conditions are true, so you have enough money, you are hungry and you are bored, then I want you guys to print, eat something fancy or really whatever you want. It doesn't matter that much. Let me actually uncomment them and add a comment for the exercise and now pause the video and do this one yourself. Let's start with money available is greater than 80. That's the one we have already used. And I guess while we are here, I can also print something to check on what if statement we are. For this one, I want to print, I have enough money. After that, I want to check the next if statement. And I just want to check if hungry is equal to true. And if that's the case, I can print and I am hungry. Inside of that, I want to check if board is equal to true. And if that's the case, I want to print the final thing, eat something fancy. Before I run it, I do want to comment out this part here. So we keep things a bit cleaner. If I run this now, we only get up to, I have enough money, this line here. We are not getting to if hungry because hungry is false. If I set this hungry to true, we get, let me expand this a tiny bit. I have enough money. I am hungry and eat something fancy. All three conditions here are true. And with that, we have if statements. Obviously, you could also add else statements in here if you really wanted to and make this even more complex. 
Now there's one more thing that I want to cover really quick. Writing something like this is a bit redundant. All you really need is hungry by itself. If I run this, it would still work. What happens here is that Python looks at the hungry variable and the value for hungry is true. Meaning this if statement here is essentially if true. And keeping like this is much more readable. If a value is truthy, you could just add it in here and then Python would take care of the rest for you. But being more explicit about it would also still work perfectly fine. But all right, with that, we have if statements covered.